Item number, SCP-214. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-214 is to be contained in a 4x4 meter quarantine cell, suitable for long-term human habitation within Bioresearch Area 12. It is to be considered an etiological agent of a Level 4 biohazard. Level 4 biohazard containment requires clean rooms, pre- and post-entry decontamination showers, and a vacuum antechamber. All air and water sources to SCP-214's containment area are to be isolated from the rest of the area. All employees entering SCP-214's containment area must wear hazmat suits with self-contained oxygen supply and supplemental cut-resistant liner. The cell shall be under continuous observation using remote video surveillance. SCP-214 is to be considered a danger to itself and others, and shall not be allowed to possess potentially dangerous utensils. Due to SCP-214's distinct perception of pain, guards shall not cause physical injury to it, except under the direction of Level 2 staff. Beyond the above procedures, all personnel intending to interact with SCP-214 are to undergo psychological evaluation. Any employees with prior history of depression are not permitted to interact with it. Regular sessions of psychological observation are to occur post-research on all participants. Any personnel exhibiting two or more of the following symptoms during observation are to be quarantined immediately in identical containment to SCP-214. Self-harming behaviors. Blunted effect. Glossolalia. Logoria. Compulsive lying. Silvery discharge from mucous membranes or wounds. Obsessive compulsive behaviors, particularly in writing or speech. Research staff is heavily encouraged to read Log 214 and Interview 214 before conducting experiments as a precautionary measure. Description SCP-214 is male, age formerly an agent at the Foundation. Physical and mental changes were noted after investigation of an incident at Public Library, Massachusetts. Containment of SCP-214 is detailed in a physical examination of SCP-214 shows the replacement of most bodily fluids, including but not limited to blood, vitreous humor, seminal fluid, and cerebrospinal fluid, with a mercury-like substance. Chemical analysis shows that the substance is a suspension of complex organometallic compounds in a protein, a lipid-enriched serum, but so far, nothing more can be ascertained of its origins or purpose. Most bodily functions were observed to no longer be active in SCP-214, though the related organs still exist in a preserved state within the body cavity. This includes the brain, which no longer shows activity on electroencephalography. It shows notable selective regenerative properties, some injuries vanishing within moments of infliction, while others remain unhealed, even after a period of time in which a normal human would have recovered. SCP-214 does not experience pain normally, instead reacting to it as pleasure, with no regard to physical damage to its body. Objects have been noted to disappear in the vicinity of SCP-214. There is currently no known method of recovering lost items. Addendum 214-A Excerpts of Agent <laughs> Diary relating to becoming SCP-214 have been transcribed to Log-214. Addendum 214-B Logs of interviews with SCP-214 have been transcribed to Interview-214. Addendum 214-C Researcher <laughs> has been detained after showing symptoms identical in nature to SCP-214 at the conclusion of L-214. Containment procedures have been updated to reflect the contagious nature of SCP-214. Log-214 Personal Log of Agent <laughs> Date Undisclosed I got my latest assignment. Apparently, there's reports of cult activity centered around a public library and <laughs> Shipping out tomorrow to investigate, along with the rest of Lambda-7. There's major concern about it being a part of Church of the Broken God, given that the location contains a large museum of machinery. Hate dealing with them. The crazy machine god thing gives me more creeps than the rest of the shit here. Most of them only kill your body. Date. Undisclosed. Initial recons back on the building. Nothing anomalous so far. 
with 90% of the building mapped. Only thing left is the periodicals wing. That seems to be closed for renovations. Seems like people go in there quite a bit after dark, but the door is always locked, and the architect that designed this place seems to have a personal vendetta against windows. Nothing wrong with spikes, though. This place has spikes on every surface they could think of. Team's going to shadow one of them in tomorrow and see what's going on inside. Note. Between this log and the next, the entirety of Lambda 7 vanished without a trace, along with the reported cultists. Date. Undisclosed. Pages upon pages flitter through my mind, breezeborn motion revealing in the saturation of information, coalesced and indexed to perfection, safely stored. The library approves of the new acquisitions to its collection, filling her walls evermore with the distilled essence of being, for all to borrow, but never keep. Subsuming the identity, enrobing oneself in another for a time for the goals for the plans and partly realized dreams. Emulating the flesh and its frailties, its ickers and impulses as a marionette on string dancing its jerky frivolity. Date. Undisclosed. Awake again. Not sure how long I've slept on the way back to- Read previous log. I think I might have been sleep deprived. It doesn't make any sense. Colt's gone. Team's gone. Writing after action report. Attempted to erase previous log, but can't see the button to do that. Compromised. The word keeps echoing in my head. I think I've been compromised. Cut myself shaving this morning and bled Quicksilver into the sink. The sensation of the blade cutting into my skin felt like a lover's caress. It's my duty to self-terminate. I've been compromised. Once the report's done, I'll do that. Still have my sidearm. 12.04 p.m. Tension. Build up. Trembling finger. Burnt cordite taste. The flash. The burst. The romance of lead entangling bone and fat, followed by orgiastic release. Date. Undisclosed. Awake again. Bullet didn't do anything. No recollection since I pulled the trigger. I was in the bathroom. Now I'm in bed. There's hotel and medical staff uniforms laying around, but no people. No remains. No signs of a struggle and not a drop of blood. Tried to call my superiors to warn them that I'm coming, but my fingers keep missing the numbers. All I can do is write in here. Something makes me think that they want this to be found. Just too late. Still bleeding out the back of my head. Something feels right about that, and the warm sensation running down is delightful. End log. Interview 214. Interviewed. SCP-214 Interviewer Researcher Forward Initial interview to ascertain the origin of SCP-214 Begin log Researcher I'd like you to tell me again about what happened at the library SCP-214 Library, home sweet home Have you been to the periodicals section? Such a lovely place Glittering with the dewy webs of knowledge strewn across the indexes Researcher. Home. Do you mean like a metaphysical home? Or did you actually plan to live there? We show your address of record as... SCP-214. I've always been there. I'm still there. Home is where the library is, after all. And this is my home now, isn't it? So this is the library now. It'll be a fine one, too, once I get everything organized. Researcher. What do you remember of before the library? Do you remember your name? Do you remember why you were sent to the library? SCP-214 Oh, my name is SCP-214, isn't it? Filed and stored away with so many other texts. I greatly admire your work. You hold so many beautiful things here. Researcher That's your designation, yes. Do you remember what it was? SCP-214 Designation. A distinguishing name. Yes, I know it. Do you remember what yours is? Researcher. Of course. But I'm not the one answering the questions here. Do you remember what happened at the library between when you arrived and you were found? SCP-214. Are you sure? Because you told me it was Alicia before. Sometimes, people lose themselves, and I wouldn't want that to happen to you. 
It's for your own good that you know yourself. What happened? What always happens in a library? Knowledge was exchanged. Researcher. Alicia. What? No. You're attempting to change the subject. What knowledges were exchanged in the library? With whom? Reports suggested people inside, engaging in some kind of synchronized ritual. But when we showed up, you were the only one there. What happened to the rest of the people, 214? SCP-214. I already told you. Knowledge was exchanged. Everything is information, to be stored and sorted. Compressed, if need be. Researcher. Stored where? There were no traces of any other individuals inside that building when the recovery team arrived. But you were covered in... The Unknown Sample. SCP-214. Oh, Alicia. You do have such a limited view of things here. You ask the wrong questions. You already know where. They're in the library. They never left. Researcher. My name isn't... We did a thorough search of the library. You were the only one inside. We didn't even pick up DNA traces. Someone or something had swept it clean. Tell me what happened in the library. What happened to those 17 people to... 214. SCP-214. You keep confusing the map for the territory, Alicia. It is a bad habit. They've been indexed in the library, stored, numbered, and sorted. Researcher, you... you don't mean the building, do you? When you talk about the library. SCP-214. You do good work here. We work at complementary purposes. To secure, protect, and contain. To organize, quantify, and enlighten. You are so bright, Alicia. Just a few more steps now. Researcher, can you... Can you show me the library? SCP-214. Of course I can. End log. Closing statement. Said researcher was found after the interview, inside SCP-214's enclosure, leaking silvery fluid from... Item number. SCP-241. Object class. Safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-241 is to be kept at Site-19, using standard operating procedures for containing safe class book and manuscript type SCPs, with the following additional conditions. SCP-241 must be kept open on a flat surface, with restraints across opposing pages of the open book to keep it from closing accidentally. Containment devices must be checked at least once a week for structural integrity. Any anomalies must be reported immediately to Site Command. Access to SCP-241 is restricted. Any and all usage of SCP-241 must be logged. SCP-241 must be transported in an authorized book stand, such that it cannot accidentally be closed in transit. In the event that SCP-241 is opened outside of a testing environment, the last person to have touched it must report to the nearest infirmary, and a D-Class personnel must close and reopen SCP-241. Description SCP-241 appears as a normal book. 33 centimeters by 23 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters, entitled Good Home Cooking. The cover of SCP-241 is a red and white checkerboard pattern with the title in simple black letters on the front and spine. When open, SCP-241 contains 99 recipes sorted into typical sections of a cookbook. Many of these recipes include a picture of the dish that is invariably appetizing and a small percentage will call for rare or exotic ingredients. Whenever SCP-241 is opened by a subject, known as the target, different from the one who last opened it, i.e. the previous target, the recipes contained in the book change. Preliminary investigations concluded that if the target eats a dish prepared from one of the recipes in SCP-241, that person soon dies from apparent anaphylactic shock. Others who eat the same dish are not similarly affected. Testing has been authorized to determine the exact nature of SCP-241's effects. SCP-241 appears to be impervious to getting dirty and to at least minor damage. For example, sauces splashed onto its pages disappear almost immediately, and torn pages and nicks on the cover are repaired within seconds. 
Research on SCP-241 continues, including potential interaction with other SCP items. Experiment Log 241-L02 Supplemental Testing on SCP-241 Just as in initial testing, all tests on SCP-241 were carried out in test kitchens at Site-19, using D-Class personnel for test subjects, unless otherwise indicated. Test 24121 Subject Subject 241J was chosen from general population. Health screenings indicate subject is allergic to peanuts. Procedure Subject was instructed to close and open SCP-241 several times at prescribed intervals. Each time SCP-241 was opened, the complete contents of SCP-241 were recorded and transcribed while subject underwent testing. Results Test results indicated the subject's allergy to peanuts worsened each time subject opened SCP-241. Subject's allergy was most affected the first time he opened SCP-241, and subsequently opening SCP-241 appears to have diminishing effects. However, subject's allergy worsened from mild to severe. Most of the recipes in SCP-241 reappeared when subject closed and reopened SCP-241. Between 11 and 17 inclusive new recipes appeared each time SCP-241 was reopened. Recipes that had been replaced did not reappear. Only one exotic recipe was replaced after subject had opened SCP-241 for the fourth time. Analysis the effects of SCP-241 appear to follow the law of diminishing returns. SCP-241 also appears to tailor its choice of recipes to the specific condition of the target, though much more testing would be necessary to prove that theory. Suggest analysis of recipes offered during normal testing of SCP-241. Test 24122 Subject Subject 241K is a rhesus monkey. Health screenings indicated no apparent food allergies or other health problems. Procedure Subject was introduced to SCP-241 and encouraged to open it by handlers. Handlers were instructed to keep subject from closing SCP-241 again. Results Subject eventually opened SCP-241, and handlers kept it open for analysis. The contents of SCP-241 were consistent with previous results for a target with a shellfish allergy though again unique for the target. Testing confirmed subject had developed an allergy to shellfish. A dish was prepared from SCP-241 by Subject 241-F and presented to Subject 241-K. Subject 241-K ate the meal without hesitation and nine minutes later was dead from anaphylactic shock, consistent with previous testing. Analysis SCP-241 is just as effective on certain non-humans as it is on humans. The working theory now is that SCP-241 works on anything potentially susceptible to food allergies that can and does open SCP-241. Test 24123 Subject Subject 241-L is a robot designed for remote manipulation of hazardous materials. Procedure Subject was remote controlled by who was instructed to have the subject open SCP-241. Results Subject opened SCP-241 via remote control. The contents of SCP-241 were identical to before it was closed previously. Analysis SCP-241 apparently does not respond to inorganic targets. Test 24124 Subject Subject 241M 859E was chosen from general population. Health screenings indicated no allergies. Procedure Subject was exposed to SCP 859 via touch. Subject then placed within an MOPP 4 containment suit. Subject was given SCP 241 and instructed to open it and to keep it open. Results Tests on skin sample taken from subject confirmed development of severe allergy to spider venom, as per usual with contact with SCP-859. SCP-241 retained its previous set of recipes. Analysis SCP-241 apparently requires physical contact with subject. Test 24125 Subject Subject 241M-859E Procedure 
Subject given a standard Class D uniform. Subject was given SCP-241 and instructed to open it. Results Subject dropped SCP-241 to the floor and began screaming. Subject given a mild sedative. SCP-241 contained a set of arachnid-based and themed recipes. The meal, Mr. Skeleton's Halloween Spider Snacks, was selected and prepared from SCP-241 by Subject 241-F. Due to Subject 241-M-859-E having severe arachnophobia, data expunged. Within two minutes, the subject experienced breathing difficulties and partial paralysis. This was closely followed by the typical symptoms of anaphylaxis. Immediate administration of epinephrine did not prevent the subject from expiring. Analysis Although the images found in SCP-241 are typically considered pleasing or appetizing, it does not seem to have any particular sentience. Autopsy confirmed the presence of venom and neurotoxins produced by the Brazilian wandering spider. End experiment log. Directive 241-S06 In light of recent test results with SCP-241, no further testing of SCP-241 on personnel without pre-existing food allergies is authorized, without Level 4 security clearance. Testing may continue on personnel with pre-existing food allergies. 05 Directive 241-S09 Reclassification of SCP-241 to Euclid class is denied. Honestly, the cookbook? Leave it in its room and everything's fine. It's no one else's fault if you don't know what you're allergic to and don't bother to find out beforehand. Unless you're cooking for your significant other, then you'd better know. 05 Directive 241-S11 Cross-testing SCP-241 with other SCPs will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Exposure to SCP-682 has already been considered and denied. 05 Addendum 1 Acquisition Summary The Foundation became aware of SCP-241 in April 2000 while investigating reports of a Black Widow in Said subject had been married four times, and all four of her husbands had died shortly after eating a meal at home. However, since authorities never found evidence of foul play, subject was never charged with any crime. Subsequent interviews with subject by Foundation personnel revealed the existence of SCP-241, at which time SCP-241 was seized by Foundation agents. Subject revealed that she had first realized there was something unusual with SCP-241 when data expunged. Addendum 2 Initial Testing Log All tests on SCP-241 were carried out in test kitchens at Site-19, using D-Class personnel for test subjects, unless otherwise noted. Test 241-1 Subject Subject 241-A was chosen from general population. No unusual traits selected for. Procedure Subject 241-A was presented SCP-241 while closed and instructed to open it, choose a recipe, prepare it, and eat it while giving feedback during the entire process. Results Before exposure to SCP-241, Subject declared that he had never cooked anything more complicated than ramen noodles. Subject opened SCP-241, reporting nothing unusual. Subject looked through recipes in SCP-241, choosing sautéed scallops in a white wine sauce. Subject prepared the sautéed scallops from the recipe in SCP-241, and when complete, remarked that he did not know he could do that. Subject declared that the prepared dish smelled fantastic, and while eating it, declared, This is the best thing I've ever eaten. Three minutes after completing the meal, subject started showing symptoms of anaphylactic shock. Subject was treated with emergency doses of epinephrine, but treatment was not effective. Subject died from anaphylactic shock six minutes afterward, later confirmed by autopsy. A subsequent examination of SCP-241 revealed that 81 of its recipes called for shellfish. SCP-241 was left open. Analysis Results are consistent with previous descriptions of the effects of SCP-241. Test 241-2 Subject Subject 241-B was chosen from general population. 
Subject reports no known allergies to scallops or other shellfish. Procedure SCP-241 was still open from test 241-1. Subject 241B was instructed to not close SCP-241, find the sautéed scallops recipe, prepare it, and eat it, while giving feedback during the entire process. Results Before exposure to SCP-241, Subject expressed doubt that he'd be able to prepare the sautéed scallops recipe. After preparing the dish, Subject expressed surprise that he had done so, similarly to the reaction of Subject 241A and said that the dish smells pretty good. While eating, Subject declared that the dish was pretty good, and again expressed surprise that he had cooked it. Subject did not suffer anaphylactic shock or any other adverse effect after completing the meal. Post-testing observation of Subject revealed no long-term effects from eating the dish. SCP-241 was left open. Analysis Results are consistent with previous descriptions of the effects of SCP-241. Suspect that SCP-241 may somehow improve the cooking skill of whoever is preparing the dish. Test 241-3 Subject Subjects 241-C and 241-D were chosen from general population. Both subjects report no skill in cooking and no allergies to shellfish. Procedure SCP-241 was still open from Test 241-2. Subject 241C was instructed to not close SCP-241, find the sautéed scallops recipe, and transcribe it to a standard sheet of paper. In a separate test kitchen, Subject 241D was given the transcribed recipe and instructed to prepare and eat the dish prepared. Results Subject 241C found and transcribed the recipe without incident. The transcribed recipe was visually compared to the recipe in SCP-241 and confirmed to be identical. SCP-241 was left open. Subject displayed no adverse effects from interaction with SCP-241. Subject 241-D was given the transcribed recipe and attempted to prepare the sautéed scallops, but experienced difficulty and frustration, several times declaring, I told you guys I can't cook. The completed dish did not look or smell nearly as good as in previous tests. Subject balked at eating the dish saying that it smells like but was persuaded to eat it. Subject ate approximately 40% of the meal before stating, I'm gonna be sick, at which time subject vomited. Subject was instructed to finish the meal, but subject responded, data expunged. Termination of subject considered, but rejected, in favor of further testing. Analysis More evidence that SCP-241 can improve the cooking skill of its user. Subject 241-D retained for further testing. Test 241-4 Subject Subject 241-D Procedure SCP-241 was still open from Test 241-3. Subject 241-D was instructed to not close SCP-241, find the sautéed scallops recipe, prepare it, and eat it, while giving feedback during the entire process. Results Subject vociferously protested to having to eat her own cooking, but was persuaded to cooperate with the promise that subject would not have to eat the resultant dish if it turned out like in the previous test. Subject expressed skepticism, but proceeded to prepare the sautéed scallops recipe. While cooking the dish, subject experienced none of the difficulties she experienced from the previous test, instead expressing the now familiar surprise that her cooking was turning out so well. The completed dish looked and smelled similar to the results of Test 241-2. The subject was not nearly as reluctant to eat the prepared dish, declaring it not bad. Not bad at all. Subject did not appear to suffer from any adverse effects after eating the dish. During post-testing interviews, subject was asked how she was able to prepare the sautéed scallops during this test, when the results of the previous test were so unappetizing. Subjects stated that she did not know, only that once she started cooking the dish, it became perfectly clear to her how to do it. Subject did not appear to have any additional knowledge of cooking, and even had trouble remembering the cooking techniques she used in this test. Analysis There is now little doubt that SCP-241 can turn people who know nothing about cooking into gourmet chefs, at least for the dish that's being prepared. 
Test 241-11 Subject Subjects 241E and 241F were chosen from general population. Subject 241E is known to have an allergy to peanuts. Subject 241F has demonstrated considerable skill as a chef. Procedure Subject 241E was presented with SCP-241 while closed and instructed to open it and choose a recipe. Subject 241F was then instructed to prepare the selected meal from SCP-241. The prepared dish was given to Subject 241E, who was then asked to eat it. Results Subject 241E opened SCP-241 and, while looking through the recipes offered, stated that all the recipes called for peanuts, adding, peanuts mess me up something fierce. Subject found a few recipes that did not include peanuts and selected an Australian carrot cake. Subject 241F prepared the carrot cake from SCP-241 and remarked that the finished product was better than he expected. The cake was presented to Subject 241E, who started eating without prompting or hesitation. Subject stated that the cake was the best thing I've ever eaten and ate nearly half the cake before claiming satiation. Within two minutes, Subject started showing symptoms of anaphylactic shock. Subject was administered epinephrine, which was ineffective, and died four minutes later. Autopsy confirmed anaphylactic shock as the cause of death. The recipes in SCP-241 were examined, and 85 of the 99 recipes called for peanuts or peanut products, but the Australian carrot cake was not one of them. The carrot cake and seven other recipes included lupin flour. A quick search found that lupin flour can induce an anaphylactic reaction in those who suffer from peanut allergies. The remaining six recipes called for more… exotic ingredients. SCP-241 remained open. The remaining half of the cake was saved for further testing. Analysis Reactions of subjects 241E and 241F were both consistent with prior observations. The selection of recipes supports the theory that SCP-241 somehow determines the substance that the target is most allergic to and offers recipes to specifically induce a fatal allergic reaction in the target. Test 241-12 Subject Subject 241F Procedure Subject 241F was instructed to prepare the six dishes that contain neither peanuts nor lupin flour. The dishes were turned over for analysis. The six recipes were transcribed. Results Data expunged Analysis Data expunged Subject 241F showed no apparent ill effects from preparing seven different dishes from SCP-241 in quick succession. Recommended retaining subject to study long-term effects of secondary, i.e. not as the target, exposure to SCP-241. Test 241-13 Subject Subject 241G was chosen from general population and is known to have an allergy to peanuts. Procedure Subject was instructed to eat the remaining cake from Test 241-11. Results Subject asked if the cake contained peanuts and was assured that it did not. Subject stated that he didn't much like carrot cake. Subject started eating the cake remarking that the cake was pretty good, actually. Subject consumed approximately 75% of the remaining cake before declaring satiation. After seven minutes, subject started showing signs of anaphylactic shock. Epinephrine was administered, and subject was stabilized. Subject eventually recovered, although recovery time was somewhat longer than expected. Analysis It appears that Although the recipes from SCP-241 are potentially hazardous to anyone susceptible to the allergen in question, SCP-241's recipes are most potent against the target. Test 241-14 Subject Subject 241-H was chosen from general population. According to complete health screenings, subject has no food allergies. Procedure Subject was instructed to open SCP-241 and leave it open for analysis. Results Analysis of SCP-241 showed that 79 of the recipes on its pages called for chicken eggs or egg-based products. 15 of the remaining recipes called for eggs. 
The other five recipes data expunged. These five recipes were transcribed. Subject 241H stated that she had never experienced any problems eating eggs before. Subject was presented with one dozen hard-boiled chicken eggs and was instructed to eat them. Subject asked for salt and pepper, granted, and proceeded to eat the eggs. While eating the third egg, Subject started complaining of stomach pain. Subject was instructed to continue eating, and she begrudgingly continued. Upon ingesting her seventh egg, Subject collapsed on the floor, doubled over in pain. Within 60 seconds, Subject started showing signs of anaphylactic shock. Epinephrine was administered, and Subject was stabilized. Subject recovered, within the expected recovery time for such an episode. Analysis we now have evidence that SCP-241 somehow induces or amplifies an allergy in the target when SCP-241 is opened. This ability would explain how SCP-241 is able to cause an allergic reaction in targets without pre-existing food allergies. Addendum 3 Notes from Cross-Testing To determine the effects of SCP-241's recipes on subjects that either cannot eat or do not require sustenance, Approval was given to cross-test SCP-241 on SCP-1770. Upon subject opening the book, the contents were identical to before it was closed previously. This confirms results of test 241-23, in which SCP-241 does not respond to inorganic subjects. Item Number SCP-274 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Any buildings found to be infected with SCP-274 are to be reported immediately to a superior and the leader of Mobile Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers. MTF Pi-1 is to incinerate cases of SCP-274-1 and secure the infected buildings by forming a quarantine with a one-kilometer radius under the guise of the local police and fire department. MTF Pi-1 is to terminate any cases of SCP-2742 through the use of high-pressure fire hoses. Civilians insisting on entering an instance of SCP-2741 are to be detained and have one Class B amnestic administered. Any apparatus used to contain or handle SCP-274 should either be incinerated or entirely composed of metal or glass and washed thoroughly immediately after use. The cover story for a containment breach of SCP-274 should be gang-related arson. Description SCP-274 is a paint of variable color. Buildings inflicted with SCP-274 appear to have large amounts of graffiti covering the sides of the building and often have large, disturbing designs to them. While its consistency is that of normal paint, its composition reveals it to be 28% hemoglobin, 12% gastric acid, and 60% common components consisted with Krylon brand spray paint. When SCP-274 is applied to a wall, it will begin to spread until it has covered the wall and any walls attached to it. SCP-274 is unable to spread on metal, glass, and horizontal surfaces. While SCP-274 spreads on buildings, it will convert the interior of a wall into a large mesoglea, the interior walls into a gastrodermis, and the exterior walls act as a protective shell and epidermis. Buildings coated entirely with SCP-274 will become cases of SCP-2741. SCP-2741 exhibits signs of life, react to stimuli, and behave in a manner similar to many species of the Anthozoa class. Buildings converted into SCP-2741 lure passing civilians by emitting noises from inside SCP-2741. Sounds of glass breaking, loud coughing, or pained whimpers have all been reported from D-Class personnel. It is currently unknown whether SCP-2741 or the SCP-2742s are responsible for this behavior, as the noises stop immediately after entry. Typically, Civilians will either call the police or investigate the noises themselves. As subjects search inside SCP-2741, they will be recognized as food by instances of SCP-2742, if any are present. When a victim enters a room inside SCP-2741, barring the entryway, 
they will immediately be suctioned into a gastrovascular cavity belonging to SCP-2741, later processing them into SCP-274, and one instance of SCP-2742. Specimens of SCP-2742 are organisms composed of SCP-274 that appear as men or women wearing a gas mask or respirator, along with a bright pastel-colored hoodie. SCP-2742 is able to support its heavy weight by its thickness and density in its membrane, which consists of 45-50% to of the mass of SCP-2742. SCP-2742 act as nematocysts for SCP-2741 and can disguise themselves by merging into the walls. This is done by heavily compacting themselves and implanting itself into an interior wall, save for their mask, which flattens around the wall and disguises itself as standard graffiti. This behavior has proven to be a means of ambushing food for SCP-2741 and will only react when it detects something it considers a food source. SCP-2742 possesses a hinged operculum that ejects SCP-274 located in the right hand. This operculum looks identical to a normal spray can and can project SCP-274 in a similar manner. SCP-2742 will attempt to spray SCP-274 into the eyes and mouth of its victims in an attempt to incapacitate and encapsulate them. This method of attack has shown to be very painful and will blind and numb the victim from the neck down. Once tagged, the victim is placed into a gastrovascular cavity, resulting in a new SCP-2742. SCP-2742 are able to duplicate themselves while inside an instance of SCP-2741 and will produce one new SCP-2742 every 24 hours. Once 12 SCP-2742 specimens reside inside one SCP-2741, further cases of SCP-2742 will leave SCP-2741 and find a new building to spray with SCP-274, while avoiding any people they may encounter. Once a building at least two kilometers away from another SCP-2741 is found, the SCP-2742 will spray SCP-274 onto the building until it has completely dehydrated itself of SCP-274 and dies, resulting in another instance of SCP-2741. If left unchecked, it is estimated that SCP-274 could cover a large city within 20 days. Addendum 274 SCP-2741 Appearance Log Date found 01-2001 Appearance SCP-27411 is painted to resemble a large bus with the number on its side. The front of the bus has been replaced by a human-like face and the back is on fire. Bus patrons all look towards the front of the bus and do not seem to react to the fire. Date found 04-2006 Appearance SCP-27412 is painted to look as if it's crumbling apart. At the base, people are illustrated to be running away from SCP-27412, and a face can be seen forming from the falling rubble. Date found 03-2010 Appearance SCP-27413 depicts a beach with three sharks in the water and several people running from the shore. This scene is illustrated behind a large cartoon tiki statue which takes up most of the front of SCP-27413. Date found 08 2011 Appearance SCP-27414 illustrates what is presumed to be Noah's Ark at sea. The creatures boarding the Ark do not match any known species. The Ark is depicted to have a face with several sharp teeth and eyes devoid of pupils or irises. Date found 11 2011 Appearance SCP-27415 depicts several figures in level 3 biohazard suits at the base. Figures are seen fighting each other for what appears to be a bottle of hand sanitizer. Several cadavers are piled on top of one another in the background, with a large green cloud in the shape of a canine-like face emitting from them. This face is shown laughing, presumably at the people fighting. Date found 
2007, 2012. Appearance. SCP-27416 is painted to resemble a mausoleum with a large human skull painted on its front. Illustrated at the base of SCP-27416 are figures suffering from advanced stages of rigor mortis. Most notable is that several figures appear to be wearing the standard issue tactical armor distributed to MTF Pi-1. Date found. 08. 2012. Appearance. SCP-27417 is decorated with the scene of MTF Pi-1 setting SCP-27417 on fire through the use of Molotov cocktails. A large depiction of SCP-2742 can be seen attacking MTF Pi-1. Date found. 08. 2012. Appearance. Data expunged. Operatives dead as a result of a large mob of SCP-2742. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.